Hey there, Grade 8. Welcome back. This is the one, the only Mr. Sutton. Yes, I know, and I'm here in my home studio. I am so happy to be here during this beautiful, beautiful, wait, no, um, sorry, typhoon. So it's been a long time since we've done some virtual learning, and I apologize if I'm a little out of practice, um, but here we are. I'm having flashbacks of February, March, 2020. Ooh, did I just mention COVID? So let's move on from that and let's just get today rolling, shall we? All right, so if you log into Manage Back and you click on the calendar, you will see that we have posted A4. And uh, today we're gonna take a look at your criteria A4, the design brief. But before we get to discussing this, which you see here, I want to review A3 because we talked about that one and assigned it, as you know, before China trips. So we've had a lot that's happened. So let's go ahead and open up the instructions for A3 and let's just have a quick review of it. Now, if you recall, we watched these really funny videos about the useless box. We talked about some sustainability and the practicality of it, the customer and the function and the aesthetics. And then we looked at some others and analyzed and broke down some other boxes. And I think we had a good time. Uh, and in that A3, the discussions we had in class are pretty much what you're gonna write about. You need to pick three minimum because we need to explore a range of products as it says in the rubric right here, let's adjust that screen, there we go, a, a range or a group of products that are similar to what you're gonna create that can help inspire your own solution. So let's suppose you're going to create a cup, right? You wanna make a new cup or mug for whatever purpose. Then is it appropriate to analyze your remote control? Probably not. It would be appropriate though to analyze another drinking cup. Right, so this is one provided by SCIS. It was from the Winter Carnival. And I've got another one right here. It's not actually a cup, but it is a container for beverages. <sighs> Magnifique. So in looking at these products, we could discuss the aesthetics of it, right? Why is it colored the way it is? Why does it have text and labeling on it the way it is? And in doing that, we would be summarizing, well, it's blue, it has these little flourish embossments on it, it has the, the SCIS logo and name on it. That's a summary of what we can see. But in order to achieve the maximum score, we don't just wanna summarize it. Because when we summarize it, we're only kind of looking at the surface of what the product is. We need to dig deeper to find more of the meaning and the purpose of it to understand the product so that we have a better understanding of what we're gonna create ourselves. And in that, we need to an analyze it. So how do you analyze? We talked a lot about that, but just in case you were not there um, or may have forgotten, let's jump over to the internet again. Summary versus analysis. These are so, so easy to get confused. Now, I just went to Bing. We can all do that without a VPN. So we can go to Bing and I just type summary versus analysis. And I get a, a, an explanation here, but it's, it's a little confusing. But right here is an excellent explanation. A summary outlines the main elements. Who, what, where, when, how, why, right? What, it's blue. Why? Because it's representing winter and blue and snow and ice is cold and cold things we represent with cool colors like blue, right? It has uh, the school logo on it because it comes from the school, right? That's, that's a summary. But an analysis examines it for a deeper meaning. So why did we put it on there? Well, that's, that's marketing, that's advertisement. It's a reminder of our school that every time I pick this cup up and I drink from it, ah, refreshing. I'm reminded of SCIS, right? This is free advertisement. Not free, we had to pay for the cup, but this is advertising for the school. And that is why they put it on there, right? So that that is uh, trying to understand the meaning and the elements for a deeper level. It has, the name of the school has nothing to do with the aesthetics. Well, maybe it does, but it has nothing to do with the function, which is the drink. But what it does do is it provides a secondary function to advertise a third function for nostalgia and on and on you go, right? If I have this cup 15 years from now or 20 or 40 years from now when I'm like 80, I pick it up, oh, I remember those good times at SCIS, oh yes, good times. Right? I feel good about it. 
So we can dig deeper into the meaning of it and we can take that as inspiration. So again, if you're making, if I'm making a cup, maybe I want to make one that's, oh, I don't know. Here we go. You ready for it? What am I going to say? Star Wars themed, or in this case, maybe Harry Potter, like behind me, then instead of putting the school logo on it, maybe I put something iconic from Star Wars or the school. Okay? So that's inspiring me. Okay. Now, if you're, if you're still struggling a bit, I suggest maybe doing an image search. So I went to Bing Images and I just searched summary versus analysis and they have example after example after example after example from lots of other teachers and schools and people and it just goes on and on and on, right? So there definitely is something in here that can help you. But if you're still struggling, of course, talk to me in class when we're back in school or shoot me an email or message me on Teams and I will be glad to help you today. Okay, now that is a three. And remember, you're gonna do three of these. And when you do look at them, I only want you to focus on these four elements of the Access FM, the aesthetics, the size, the function, and the materials. What does it look like? How big is the product? Who is it, sorry, what is it going to do? What's the purpose? And then what is it made out of, right? Because these are the four components that we're gonna talk about with regard to our unit this time around. All right, now, enough about A3. Let's go check out today's activity, A4. Believe it or not, completing A3 is gonna help you substantially in A4. Why? Because the design brief is what we're gonna create. Most of you have done this already. What is this, grade eight, two, four? This is your fifth time to do it for most of us. The design brief is a summary of the project's goals. Again, a summary of very short, concise, straight to the point description of what we're gonna do. In fact, in the instructions here, it's laid out for you. It says concisely state, it's a very short words, not a lot of action, not a lot of, uh, you don't have to use complete sentences. It could be a bullet point list, right? I will create a pencil stationary organizer. Next bullet point, who it's for? This is for students in the ages of six to 12 with desks who appreciate Star Wars. Next bullet point, how long it should take to make. From start to finish, the project should be completable in 36 hours. And what resources you need? I need so much wood, so much glue, and whatever else you think you need to create this project. All right, so this part is very simple. Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. Or you could write it out as a paragraph, but keep it very short and straight to the point. A design brief in the real world is a document that is written and generated together with sometimes the client, sometimes the designer, sometimes management, other people too, but it's a document that should provide a quick overview, a real fast overview of the project and everything it in includes. Now, that's step one, overview. If you did A1, you've already got these answers, now you're just breaking it down real focus-like, laser-like focusing. The second thing you're gonna do is a summary of those key findings right here. A super tight, concise summary of the key findings, what are those you say? Great question. They are anything you learned from your research plan research, right? Remember, when we wrote our A2 plan, I said you need to make sure you actually do that research and you had some class time to do it and of course you had homework time to do it. So at this point, now you're gonna list and again, concisely listing the most important things you learned that are relevant to your task. So if I'm again gonna create a cup and I decide to make it out of ceramic, then I needed to research how to do that. I might research on where to find the ceramic materials, how to mold it, how to, uh, what, what is it called? Oh, I've lost the word, how to, how to flame, fire it? I don't know, I don't, I'm not a ceramics person. Uh, but those key elements of what I learned needed to make this is what you, I would state, what you're gonna state in your project. Now then, the third thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take all those key elements, the, the most important details, and you're gonna to try to explain what they mean. So, 
when I researched this and this, I learned that it would be very helpful here, here, and here because, right? You're gonna form opinions and statements that are taking the information you've learned and gathered and explaining how and why it's useful to you, how it's gonna help you develop your decorative wooden product, how it's gonna help you attract the attention of your customers, how is it going to help you make your product sustainable or adaptable for whatever community we choose. Remember, keep in mind our design situation. To create a handcrafted decorative wooden gift that is adaptable for different communities, right? So whether you're making it for yourself or you're making it for children in Paris or Prague, how are you going to how are you going to achieve those goals and what did you learn in your research that will help you do it? Again, summary, here's what I learned. Analysis, here's how it's helpful to me. Okay? Here's what I learned. Here's how it's helpful. Okay? Now the final thing, the fourth and final thing you need in this research uh, design brief is a statement of feasibility. What is that? The feasibility statement simply explains if you can create this project. Given the research you've done, given the time you think you need, and given the materials you need, which you listed up here. Right? So you're gonna tell me what you need, how long it takes, what you're gonna make. You're gonna tell me what you learned. You're gonna tell me how it's useful. And you're gonna tell me if you can do it. Now this sounds like a lot. And I feel you, it is a lot, I get it. So that's why we're gonna have two classes to do it. Today, plus the next time, well next class, which will be together hopefully in the classroom, and I can help you there, all right? So this document is on ManageBack. Of course, it has some task-specific clarifications in the bottom, and it has the official MYP rubric here, the expectation for a seven, eight. So to achieve that seven and eight, you have to develop this design brief, which we've been doing as we collected our research, and then you've got to just present the analysis of what's above. In other words, present what you find, explain what it means, explain if you can do it or not, okay? There is one example over here. The text is all gobbledygook. It doesn't zoom in, but it doesn't mean anything. But this is just a sample layout of how your product or your design brief should look, right? So you've got your overview, your summary, your analysis, your feasibility, four things, all right? Now this probably seems confusing if it's new to you. And if you've been in the MYP for a while, you probably like, I got it. In fact, I, you probably stopped watching 10 minutes ago. If you are still watching, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Keep going on this. Give it your best shot today. Spend about 30, 40 minutes on it if you can. Take a break every now and then so that you can let your mind rest and settle down. And of course, reach out if I can help you today. I'm gonna to be uh, available all day on MS Teams or of course an email. So let me know if I can help you. And if you've got it, rock on, and we will review it together in class next time. All right, okay. Thanks for tuning in today. Let's hope this typhoon clears out soon and we can all get back to school on campus. All right, see y'all soon. Bye-bye.